if you're watching this video, it's, there's a reason. And the reason is because this week uh, here at Dual Pixels or um, on Dual Pixels, we started something called Dual Pixels Council. And what council is, is basically a bunch of different perspectives of what's going on in the video game industry weekly. And um, this week we have myself, uh, Freddy Fuego, and uh, Broken Games HD. And um, since I'm fairly new to you guys, I know I have to be new to you guys, but um, I'm co-founder of Dual Pixels, Brandon Brown. I know you, a lot of you guys probably see uh, articles on the site written by me. And um, I think it's good now that like, hey, like this is the guy behind the articles because like a lot of times in, in, in video game journalism, you have uh, people who they, they're well known, but they aren't out there. So we want to bring to you guys now like a face presence. So here we are. And I know um, if you if you guys are familiar with me, you probably know me from uh, back in the Iron Star days. Me, uh, Malik Forte, and a couple of, of the other guys, uh, we uh, did a lot of things that were really cool back then. So if you've been following me for this long, is now I'm here, I'm with you guys. Um, so most importantly, this week uh, we're talking about uh, the next generation of gaming. E3 is next week, and um, this week it's kind of like the preemptive things uh sony's teasing uh the playstation 4 console because we know that they can show the console back in uh february so it's, it's good to get you know like that that energy going that's what we need and um so the topic of this week uh this week's dual pixels council was the winner of the next generation and um i think personally it depends on how you what's your perspective of the winner uh what do you think uh uh condemns or not condemns uh what do you think constitutes as a winner of the next generation of consoles and this week i think um for for me personally i think the winner of the next generation it comes down to a couple things including sales uh the type of exclusive content not just exclusive games but exclusive content services and overall the customer satisfaction. I think that's those are the three core values of what constitutes as a winner of the next generation of gaming. So um, we have Wii U, which came out last year, and uh, Nintendo. It, it, it kind of had sort of a soft launch. Um, I guess this is really Nintendo's. This E3, even though they don't have a formal press conference, this is going to be their really hard hit us with everything they wanted to give us, like Smash Brothers, the new core mario game that's coming out on um on wii u uh they had pikmin 3 which i played last year at e3 um but didn't come out yet uh so pikmin was one of the big games they had last year on them in demonstration on with nintendo land which was kind of like you know like mario party with me's and you know uh so nintendo has a lot of things they want to show us uh, via nintendo direct you can check out the dual pixels website and you'll see you know what they have in store and uh sony sony revealed the playstation 4 back in february and that's gonna be i mean if, if you've seen the conference they have some crazy things to show us like uh kill zone uh shadow fall uh well the, the console itself they're gonna actually show but they gave us the specs eight gigabytes of ddr5 gddr5 ram so if you i don't know if you guys are really pc savvy but that really is a is a significant uh upgrade in in comparison with uh, current uh, pc technology and because sony is a hardware company it makes it easier for them to to actually put out that type of hardware with the new uh playstation 4. um i mean specs aside they show a lot of sharing features which is a major upgrade for the playstation network playstation network uh in terms of online functionality uh before software is really not I wouldn't consider it on the level that Xbox Live is, although overall service, I feel, justifies its its longevity and its ability to, to grow because a PlayStation Network was pretty, it was, their, it was their first console, PS3 was their first console to actually release um, the uh, PlayStation Network, and you know, they broke it to Vita, they kind of broke it to PSP, but the PlayStation 4 is going to be the evolution of it 
uh, in the same way with the original Xbox, how uh, Xbox went into Xbox 360 and we got things like party chat and all of these cool features that really took Xbox 360 as an online platform to the next level. Um, so uh, generally speaking, so that's pretty much PlayStation 4. I can dive deeper into that, but talking about the Xbox One, the Xbox One we had um, so with the Xbox One, they revealed it May 21st, Xbox One is, I'm not going to be biased and say it's a cable box, but pretty much they showed everything you would see <laughs> in a cable box um, featured in the Xbox One, but they did emphasize that it's not just for you, it's for me, your parents, <laughs> I guess your younger brothers and sisters who, who may not be able to use the controller as, as well as you can. Um, and uh, generally speaking, it has multimedia functionalities like watching TV, um, playing games. They did show Forza 5, a new uh, IP. I, f I forget who, who software it is, but it's a brand new IP. That looks pretty good, actually, in Call of Duty, obviously, um, which is going to be a multi-platform game. So I don't really consider, consider that to be something significant like that makes me say hey i want to buy an xbox one it has call of duty well we we you got black ops 2 so i i would suggest that or i would guess that um we you is going to get that game as well and obviously playstation 4 being the other next generation console other than P pc i don't consider a console but uh, other than that uh P you can expect ps4 to be getting that game as well um so they showed uh, Forza 5, they showed um, that new IP, I'm going to get the name of the IP, I'm sorry guys, um, and also we have, uh, they showed a, a suite of EA Sports titles, so I mean that's EA Sports, it's going to be multi-platform, and other than that, we've seen a lot of Kinect uh, functionality, um, I can't really, to be very honest, I can't really justify uh the, X the xbox one presentation as a really strong presentation for a next generation console because it was like it's a next generation gaming console but at the same time they are pursuing so many different markets like your living room and where your parents or where your siblings watch tv it's like it wasn't directly aimed at you so it, from a gaming perspective it didn't really hit me but um that's that's generally an overview of the xbox 360 and i think based on what we've seen out of uh playstation 4 wii u before e3 mind you this is before e3 this video was done uh days before e3 e3 is right around the corner um but i i feel strongly about the playstation 4 for a couple reasons uh one of the reasons being developers developers are if we look at the video game industry and we look at like let's say the music industry the music industry is very different when a musician or an artist puts out an album right we give all of the recognition of that album to the musician not necessarily the publishers not necessarily we do give uh props to the uh, producers they kind of are an entity of the artist uh but in the video game industry on the contrary to that we give a lot of credit or generally general public gives a lot of credit to the publishers and there's a problem with that because if you look at like if we look at the video game industry and a lot of the controversies that have went on let's say infinity ward with modern warfare 2 infinity ward and activision had a big fallout over the royalties and them getting paid for that game and what happens is is like people understand the uh, Activision and Call of Duty as one, but people don't really say like, hey, you put out, let's say Jay-Z puts out an album, that's Jay-Z's album. If Jay-Z put out Call of Duty, that would be Activision's Call of Duty, not Jay-Z's Call of Duty. Well, it's Jay-Z, that's probably a bad example because it's, it's Jay-Z, it's, you know, it's Jay-Z. But, um, so Infinity, Infinity Ward's game, they had a lot of controversy over the royalties and it shows that there, there wasn't necessarily, other than like the main 
gaming uh, consumers, the hardcore gamers, there wasn't really like a backlash like, hey, you guys are really, you're cutting Infinity War out of their money for a game that they develop, and they put their heart and soul into the game. I'm not the biggest fan of Call of Duty, but when you think about how, how much hard work someone put into a game, and and uh, they um, kind of get shafted money-wise for the royalties of their game, it's kind of like, damn, like, I want to put my heart and soul into this, but if it's not mine, I wonder if I'm going to even reap the, the credibility and benefits of being the, the composer and producer of this project. And uh, so, I mean, getting back to the point, uh, PlayStation 4 and Sony are focusing primarily on developers. So really early in the PS4 development cycle, uh, Sony approached developers and they said, what do you want in the new generation of PlayStation that will help you create your projects and bring what you, what you want your vision to life? And uh, that meant a lot of things. Because for one, with the PS3, everyone knows the uh, technical hurdles developers ran into with PS3. It took a while before even multi-platform games got on the same level of um, you know, visual fidelity as um, their 360 counterparts and uh, just running smoothly in general because the, the hardware was so alien to developers it was like is does this really is it really worth the effort so I, I think Sony Sony really it shows now that they took into account hey we have to really support these guys and let them know you know we're here for you and what do you want in the next generation of PlayStation that will help you create your projects and uh, we see on YouTube um, almost every week now a new developer diary where um, they speak about, you know, um, the, the architecture. Even with indie developers, um, they have a lot of their. I'm not too familiar with the development process and the type of fees that developers encounter, but apparently there's like uh, licensing, licensing of what dev kit tools and, and things of that nature. That factor into the overall cost of developers like indies like let's say if I want to put out a video game uh, Sony appears to be waiving these type of fees and giving them the support and the environment they need to actually create their games and that's important because more games equals more customers and more satisfied satisfied people like me and you so um, I think that is one of the core values of the new PlayStation and that's leading them into a successful generation. The second reason I believe Sony is going to be successful this generation is because of their exclusive content. And by exclusive content, I mean Killzone Shadowfall, uh, Knack, and uh, just many of their franchises that we know are going to eventually hit um, PlayStation 4 like Uncharted, uh, God of War, and those series. PlayStation really, well, PlayStation always had a long legacy of, of franchises uh, and mascots that are really respectable in the video game industry, like Last Generation, uh, Sackboy with Little Big Planet, uh, uh, Nathan Drake with Uncharted, uh, Kratos, of course, uh, dating back to the PS2, God of War, and they really build uh, different universes and IPs that we come to enjoy, so we don't mind... Um, we don't mind and we expect these games to come to the newest uh, PlayStation console and it adds to the library of many other new IPs that are also coming to uh, PlayStation 4 and, and that really shows the difference between your console and your competition's console because God of War is a game that you can't get on Xbox One and, um, and uh, Uncharted, the Uncharted series is a series that you can't get on uh, Xbox consoles. And I, I, I know there's plenty of um, Xbox One exclusives that I could touch on, but I, I don't want to... There's going to be another video where I'm as transparent as possible because Xbox One does have exclusives. But for me, I'm looking at the new generation of PlayStation as a great uh, platform that has many different exclusives that I do expect, have an expectant from developers that I know really put their all into a game when they uh, develop them. That's going to be it. I don't want to spend too much time on this subject because it is kind of irrelevant that I would spend like so long on a topic that's going to change by the week. Uh, next week is E3, like I said before, and we'll hear, we're here, we'll hear not only a lot of new details about games, the consoles themselves, 
lot of the policies that are subject to controversy like always online uh, Xbox um, and plenty of other things that uh, people want to know about PlayStation 4 that Sony has really commented on because we're I'll touch on it later um, but, but thank you for watching uh, I'm Brandon from Dual Pixels and see you guys peace